Hello book people, P.T. Hilton here. The book I'm going to talk about today is funny, it's terrifying, it's thrilling, it's possibly incredibly racist and sexist. It's complicated. It's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was the group read this month on the BookTube Reading Buddies reading group on Goodreads. And it's one of those books I've been meaning to read for a long time, so I'm really glad it was picked. It's a modern classic. I have read some Ken Casey in the past. I read his book, uh, Sometimes a Great Notion, which is actually one of my dad's favorite books. And he recommended it to, to me, and I, I, I read it, and, uh, and I liked it a lot. Ken Casey has a really unique style. Uh, it's a very dynamic kind of a immediate writing style that, that everything he writes is kind of in your face. It's kind of very almost aggressive in the in the style, but he's a very talented writer. His descriptions are like really succinct and he like points out really interesting things about stuff. Like if he's describing a forest, he describes it in a way that's uh, in like two sentences, he'll describe it in a way that's just a little different than you've ever heard a forest described before. Sometimes a great notion is like this kind of tragedy about this logging family. And uh, it, it's a very good book. So I was excited to read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You may be familiar with One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Maybe you read the book. Maybe you read it in school. Maybe it's uh, you're familiar with the Jack Nicholson film. If you're not familiar with it, it is the story of a psychiatric hospital in, I think it's in Oregon. It's kind of run with an iron fist by this really tough lady named Nurse Ratched. And uh, she always has a smile on her face. She's always incredibly like sweet and pleasant, but uh, make no mistake, she is not to be trifled with. This hospital, she runs it with very strict rules, and the hospital uses um, electroshock therapy, it uses uh, lobotomies, and it's very clear to the patients that if they don't follow Nurse Ratched's very strict rules to the T, if they question things, if they ask questions even like, what is this pill that uh, you're giving me each night? Any questions like that will be seen as signs of uh, extreme mental illness and a, a possible excuse to give them electroshop therapy or in the extreme cases, maybe even uh, lobotomize them. So we have this psychiatric hospital run with an iron fist by Nurse Ratched and then this man named Randall McMurphy comes into the ward. And McMurphy is a criminal who uh, was in a work camp and he didn't like the work camp so he basically got himself declared insane and committed to this mental hospital in the hopes that it would be a little bit easier of a sentence. He, McMurphy's got a lot of swagger, he's a really funny character. He's not the guy kind of guy who, uh, who plays by the rules necessarily. So the story of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is basically this struggle between McMurphy and Nurse Ratchet. Now all that might seem like kind of a simple story, the, the, the patient versus the nurse, but actually it's pretty complicated and there's a few reasons that it's very complicated. For one thing, this is a first person narrative and it's told from the perspective of a Native American gentleman who is in the mental hospital and is severely mentally ill. This guy, for one thing, he's, um, the whole time he's been in the hospital, which I think has been like 15 years if I remember correctly, he's pretended to be deaf and dumb. That's kind of his way of, of uh, dealing with everything. He just pretends like he can't hear what's being said and can't speak. He's actually not, of course, and we hear the whole, see the whole story through his perspective. Uh, however, like I said, he's pretty severely mentally ill. So a lot of the stuff that happens in the story is actually not really happening. Like he goes off on, on kind of long tangents about like the microphones built into the mops and the way that they, that there's little um, like listening devices built into the pills they take and the way everyone's always spying on them. So it gets a little complicated in that you're not, you know, he's not the most reliable narrator. So it's pretty clear for the most part what's real and what's not. But I think there is a case that could be made that um, we really don't know how much of the story really happened and how much of it is just the wild imaginings of, uh, of our narrator. So that's one complication. The next complication is that the characters in the story, the people in the mental hospital that we're really rooting for, including and especially probably uh, McMurphy himself, are not really good people at all. Uh, McMurphy's in jail for statutory rape of a like 15 year old girl. He is incredibly sexist and all, all, everyone basically in the mental hospital is incredibly sexist. 
the way they talk about women is not great. And uh, in fact, there's one scene in the later in the book where uh, McMurphy and a few others are kind of talking about how great it would be if they could um, kind of put Nurse Ratchet in her place by raping her. So that's that's kind of disturbing. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of kind of misogyny that goes on in this book, and also racism. There's a lot of um, black orderlies that they always refer to in the book as the black boys, even though they're of course grown men. There's a lot of racism and sexism going on uh, in these characters. They're not necessarily like pure and great, nice people. However, in the end, uh, despite all that, like their their awful qualities, um, for me at least, I couldn't help but root for them just because they're in such a terrible circumstance. You know, they're really um, being held in this in this mental hospital um, with this constant threat of electroshock therapy or maybe even uh, lobotomy and. Uh, you kind of do do want them to uh, to get some of their rights back, basically. In the end, this book to me was about kind of like what makes a hero. McMurphy is not a good guy, but he does have moments of goodness. Like he he often stands up for uh, his fellow inmates, and he's not a smart guy by any means. But he does have moments of brill- brilliance, and some of the things that he does to kind of like combat uh, Nurse Ratchet are are pretty pretty brilliant. Uh, in their own their own little ways, McMurphy isn't really doing this. It doesn't seem like to me, at least, because you know he's he's especially like heroic, or because he wants to help the other guys. Although I think there's maybe probably a little bit of that. He's not like very pure in his intentions, and he has a lot of reason not to go up against uh, Nurse Ratchet because it's kind of made clear in the book that if he toes the line and follows the rules, he could probably be out of there in a few months. But he is committed, so. The hospital decides when he gets released, and Nurse Ratchet has a big say in that. So he really has no reason to fight against her because when he's fighting against her, he's just probably lengthening his sentence in this uh, in this mental hospital uh, longer and longer. So one of the really interesting things is his motivation. Like, why is he doing this? And it's almost like he just can't help himself. Like, he just can't toe the line. He can't respect authority. He uh, he just has to fight against it. And that's part of what makes him a really interesting character. And that kind of brings back the idea of the hero. Like, even though he's not a great guy, not a smart guy, he's not doing what he's doing really for noble intentions, in my opinion. He is still fighting for the rights, basically, of all these people people in the hospital and uh, he's kind of fighting to give them a little bit more freedom so kind of the big question in the book in my mind is can this guy who's this super unlikely quote-unquote hero get these guys what they these guys who are committed in this mental institution what they really need I thought about this book a lot after I read it for days I kept like hearing the characters in my head the, the voices are very distinct um, I kept thinking about like the kind of moral ambiguity of it all. And for those reasons, if none other, I would definitely recommend this book. And despite all this, the way that some parts are hard to get through, some of like the mental uh, diversions, the stuff that the that our narrator's saying that's not necessarily true is like kind of weird and, and stuff like that. Um, because this book made me think so much, I had to give it five stars. Two other things that have to be said about this book. One, it's hilarious. Like the the dialogue is really funny in most places. The uh, the different things that McMurphy comes up with to kind of like uh, thwart Nurse Ratched. Uh, are, are really really funny a lot of times the characters are really funny the other thing to say about it is it's absolutely terrifying like the the idea of being locked up in a mental institution everyone believing whatever you say is crazy even if you're not crazy um is pretty terrifying and the stuff that's done to these patients is uh, kind of upsetting too like the first chapter is kind of just an overview of some like one night I think it is in the mental institution and that chapter was like terrifying for me like just picturing yourself in that situation and imagining all the people who have been through stuff like that in real life is just uh absolutely terrifying this book made me think about it for days afterwards it made me question kind of what a hero is it made me question why I was rooting so hard for these men it made me shudder it made me laugh and because of all that I do heartily recommend reading one flew over the cuckoo's nest I will be back later this week with, I think, a review of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, and I might uh, do a little tour of my uh, signed books as well. I will talk to you then. Have a great day.